to share with you some super easy DIYs that you can do for home decor. All right, first we're gonna just jump right into it and we're gonna start out with this one. This one is a Dollar Tree one, but I'm just showing you that you can use other items to do this, but I'm gonna be using this glass bowl and like this glass candle holder from Dollar Tree. I'm using white spray paint and black spray paint. I'm painting one piece white and one piece black. This is how they came out. I painted the inside, the outside. I'm gonna hit them both with this stone paint so that they have some texture. You can add texture in different ways, but this is the easiest way and I love this stone spray paint. I'm painting the black one back black again to get rid of those um, brownish speckles and then I'm putting them together. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue. You can use a stronger adhesive glue too along with this to make sure that everything stays nice, but mine stays just fine. And then this is how it came out. This is super easy and it gives you that modern look for only a couple of dollars because most of the items did come from the Dollar Tree and the texture in it just adds another element and kind of gives it that stone look. So I really love that piece. That's one of my favorites, my new favorites. This right here, so this is a good one because you can do this for different um, glass pieces that you have. You can use an item from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using this vase that I did get on sale and I use that vase with items from the Dollar Tree. I'll put a smaller one in and then rocks around the outside, I change it up. But I'm gonna be doing basically just a holder for it. You can do this different ways. With, with mine, I'm gonna be doing it nice and simple. So I'm just gonna take the racetracks that I did get from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hot glue mine because because it is on a curve, you're gonna to need to clamp them to keep them in place. You can use a stapler or something like that because you're gonna cover it all up if you wanted to keep them in place immediately. But I just clamped mine down with these few little clips that I had and waited for the hot glue to dry. Again, I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue. And then I did the same thing with the top. But first I measured it out. You can put your vase back in to make sure it's the right height that you want it to be. And then you just cut them with a pair of scissors because the racetrack is simple and thin. You can add other embellishments to this, whatever, but like I said, I kept mine just simple, just nice and simple. Again, I hot glued it together and clamped it and then waited for it to dry. Once everything dry, I hit the whole thing with black spray paint. And then now I'm gonna cover up where everything connects basically with some twine from the Dollar Tree. You could use a piece of burlap on top here and then wrap it in the twine. So then you won't have to go as close to the top as I did with mine. You can glam this out. You can do this so many different ways. But like I said, I'm just using twine. I love black pieces against twine. It just looks nice and simple. I'm hot gluing it down in the inside and then I'm working along the outside from the top. You can start from the bottom. You can start whichever way. Uh, so I'm just gonna hot glue it just really around the top you need to. Once you start to get to the middle, you can just wrap and then hot glue it when you're done. And then I put the vase in. And this is how it is. So easy, so simple. I did have a little drip with my paint there, but other than that, I love how this came out. It is just something so simple. And it added another touch to that vase, which I really love. So I hope that gave you some inspiration to go out and try something. This one here is a little glam piece. So if you like glam pieces, this is using mostly Dollar Tree items. So I have these mirrors from the Dollar Tree, which I taped off and then these charger plates which I'm gonna be using the back of. You can do this in different sizes, but I'm doing mine all the same size, which makes it a lot easier. And then I'm using like these glitter pieces from Dollar Tree and I'm mixing them with the crushed glass. That just gives it like a little extra sparkle. You don't have to do that part. But then I'm taking a good amount of Mod Podge and I'm placing it on the back of the charger plate after I glued the mirror to it. And then I'm placing that mixture of crushed glass and the little glitter sparkle pieces and just giving it a little pat down to hopefully most of it adheres to there and then dumping off the excess. You can wait for it to dry a little bit. And then I did the other side. You can do this all at one time. Wherever there was an empty space, you can leave it like that, but wherever there was an empty space, I just added a little more crushed glass to there once everything dried and then waited for it to dry again. And then you can cover it with a layer of Mod Podge to help seal everything in. And then I'm making my favorite way to hang it, which is just some braided twine and then a ton of hot glue and then this is how they came out and you can do this in different colors you can do this because Dollar Tree does have different shape mirrors you can do this with different mirrors you can do this with mirrors without borders just get pick up a set from like Michaels or something like that you can do this in so many different ways 
so I hope that's another one that gave you just a little bit of inspiration to go out and try this one one of my new favorites for like boho style decor so it is a like picture frame from Dollar Tree I thought it was a tray when I saw it but it had hooks to hang um, stuff on so I just took those off you could really leave it on you don't really see it at the bottom of the tray but you can save them for later to use for something else I gave the, the outside frame a little sanding because it looked um just a little rough and just to add that extra distressed look to it and then I have these wall decals from Dollar Tree also they have a bunch of different sets and you get a lot on them so I'm just gonna, at first I was gonna just take one and put it in the middle, I decided to do two. And you can also use this method and just make some nice framed artwork too with these wall decals because like I said, they have a lot of pretty options at Dollar Tree. And you can see that would make a really pretty wall decor piece and it's framed, it's ready to go. You can cover that with a layer of Maj Paj. You, then I took these beads so Dollar Tree has a ton of great wood beads. I'm using them as legs, but you can use something else. I stained them with the stain, and then I'm just placing them on the bottom here as little, reg little legs. So it's like a little riser for the tray. And that's really basically it. You can make your legs taller. You can stack your beads, different things. But I thought it was fine just with the one bead on it. It looks super cute and the size is good. It holds a few different things. You can hold candles on there. You can just decorate it, but it is really pretty. And again, I say you can use this if you don't want to do a tray as wall decor because it did have a hanger on it and it was already a picture frame in the beginning. So if you do like boho decor, I hope you try that one out because it is really easy, really quick and really simple. This one, okay, so this one is to show you just go with the flow sometime when you are doing your DIY. So I have this old frame that I have used a few times so it's already painted. Um, and then I just took one of those styrofoam boards from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut it down the size I'm measuring um, somehow the shape kind of changed after I did the project but that was okay um, but I just scored it with the razor and then you can just bend it these are real easy to cut you can also cut it with scissors but just for a clean line that is like just the easiest way to do it made sure I had the right one there and then I um, started to work on the project okay i have these little foam balls i got them in this set and then you can see they all are different sizes my um first idea was to cut them in half and place them around and it was going to be really pretty um but once i poured them out on there i like the way it looked just like that so i said i'm just going to go with that so i left them in that position and just picked up each one of them and hot glued them down um they did shift a little bit because you know they are balls so they will roll but i love the way it came out so once i was done i made sure that everything was glued down and then i'm just going to take and remove all of those little flyaways you know you get from the glue gun and then i'm going to take and paint it it is white but just to give it, you know, another coat of white and then the stone spray paint to give it that stone look. Um, and then I'm just distressing the frame because like I said, I've used this a few times. So it has a lot of paint on it. So I'm just, you know, taking some of that off and giving it kind of a distressed look. And that goes along with the stone that the stone look that is there. And then once everything was done, you just can glue everything together. You can staple everything together, but you can see the size somehow changed on the board. So I had to cut off the excess, which um, was weird because, <laughs> but um, it was fine. It worked out well. And so I just clamped that together, let that dry. And this is how it came out. And this is another one where you can do in so many different ways. You can do it. I think I'm going to go back and because I still have more left and do the other way that I was planning to do too. But I do love how this came out. Just the flow of the balls because it looks so organic in the way that it is because I didn't really place them out. This one is a dupe, so Lulu in Georgia. They have this vase and it is really pretty, $78, but $78 is a bit much. 
Um, so I decided to do it for just a couple of dollars. You can do this in different ways. You can get individual little pieces to put on here, but I did it the quickest and easiest way that I could. So I'm using items from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this vase from the Dollar Tree and then these beads. They have these beads in the party section. I use these for a ton of things because I love these beads. So what you'll do is just decide where you want to start placing your beads at. I'm starting at the bottom and then you just hit it with a dab of hot glue. You don't have to hot glue every one down, but you can go just, you know, every couple ones. You want to make sure it lines up nice and even where you started at. If you started in the middle, if you started on the bottom, wherever you started at, just to make sure it kind of mimics that vase that we are doing. And once you get to the end and everything lines up i just started a new row so i just went right on top you can cut it and go individually but this way worked out just fine and i just kept doing that till i was done i did about three rows for this and then if you do run out before you are done it's real easy you'll just start another one so you'll just put some glue and just butt up the two beads together and just continue on with what you're doing you can snip it when you're done and that's really it and then i did at the top too the lulu and georgia one had theirs like in the middle more but it was just like you know an inspiration piece so you don't have to be exact when you are using something that's inspiration or you could do it exactly the same and these beads do come in different colors so if you um are worried about the gold popping through which it really doesn't you can get it in other colors i painted mine black and then just filled it with some twigs and this is real easy real simple and another like modern inspired piece and mine only cost me a couple of dollars so that was way less than 78 dollars this another simple one i love as easy and simple one so these candle holders are from dollar tree they are coming out with a lot of nice pieces and these are so cute they have like a modern look to them and they come in a few different colors you can mix these and match these um you can leave them just how they are and just use them as candle holders but i'm gonna glue mine together and i'm gonna glue just to make it real easy and simple so i don't have to paint them i'm gonna glue the same colors together but they would look nice two-tone too but um i'm gonna make sure everything is nice and centered before the glue dries and the great thing about these they are reversible so you can use them both ways you don't have to worry about are they candle safe because they were intended to be candle holders and we didn't do anything extra to them so now you have two pretty reversible candle holders and again just for a couple of dollars and you just kind of leveled up the dollar tree item without much work at all so that's like really a five minute craft one of my favorites are these bowls and you can get these style bowls from target from walmart i like the ones from target because they're like the little flat kind of bowl and then they have the regular shape ones too they come in a bunch of different colors so if you wanted to you can just leave them the color they are like if you like mint decor you can leave this just how it is so i'm taking two flat ones and putting them together and one regular shape bowl and one flat one and putting that together Again, this is a reversible piece because you can use this two different ways. You can, if you want it, you can um, fill this with something. I just leave mine plain, but I painted one white, one black. My paint was a little messed up that day and it was coming out textured, but that worked out because I like a textured piece. This, another simple one, I'm using Dollar Tree items. So I have these little wood planks from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack for $1.25. I'm going to be using four for each of the things and then i have another little extra wood square you could use one of the planks from dollar tree to make your bottom but i just used that piece i'm going to stain all of the pieces you want to make sure you stain the sides of the pieces too i wasn't thinking when i was doing mine and i was just staining really the front because i figured i wouldn't see the sides but you do see see the sides on them so once everything is dry and you want to stain the bottom piece too um once everything is dry you can just 
put these together if you want to add a little extra support inside you can with just like a few little jingle blocks in the inside to line them up and um that would add a little extra support for you if you wanted to do that but i just held it in place until it dried again i'm just using the gorilla hot glue and i'm not using anything heavy in mind i'm not using it as a real planter but i just put everything together again waited for it to dry and then i painted the sides because i didn't do that at the beginning so you do see those from the wall so make sure you paint those but this is how it looks and then i just added the little bottom piece there these are real thin and easy to cut so i just cut them with a pair of scissors and i attached it the same way i did the rest i placed it more towards the front um because you probably won't see the back really that much i didn't really look under it but you won't see the back that much and then once you're done you just something to hang it and we're going to be using that piece that we got from that picture frame to hang it because it is nice and small and again i'm not going to be putting nothing heavy i just put a few little faux um greenery pieces in there and i had actually popped those off the stem so they were really really light but this is how it came out and i love the color of this stain and how these look just so simple and you can make those with real wood um, like wood from the hardware store and make them even bigger this is a simple piece of artwork that you can do i'm using this pack of shims that i got from the home store and then just canvas that i'm repurposing i got these a pack of two from five below and i'm just placing the shims you can cover your whole artwork with these but i'm just going to put them on one section because two i only have one pack also so i just hot glued mine down to the front of the canvas and you can see some of them i'm like staggering i'm leaving spaces in between you can do this so many different ways you can line yours up straight but um i wanted just a staggered kind of look but i'm gonna go back and fill in those spaces also but you can leave those spaces open um, like I said, you can change this up in so many different ways. That's the great thing about making your own artwork. I'm going to be taking some cork from Dollar Tree. You get this for $1.25. And I use this with a lot of different things. I'm just going to fill in some of those cracks, but not all of those cracks. Um, really just the bigger spaces there that I'm going to fill in. Um, and a few of the lines. And then once it's dry, you can sand it down, smooth it out. But I like the texture that it was giving. And so I'm just going to spray paint that section. I'm not taping it off or anything like that. I just spray painted around that section and that's how it looked. I did trace that with like a, a bit of gold paint, but um, I don't have that footage. So I just made some textured spray paint to add, I mean, some textured paint to add another level of texture. Um, I didn't have a big brush that day. I don't know where they went. So I'm just using some tissue to just blot out the paint. And then I left that to dry. And then I'm just going to make a frame, kind of like a faux floating frame. So I just have these pieces of wood that I got from the hardware store and you're just going to cut them down to size. So it's real easy, real simple. And again, it's giving that floating frame kind of look, but without the floating frame, I am like just going to cut them down to size, line them all up once I have all of my pieces. And I did this for another frame too. So these pieces made two frames and I still have some extra left. So once I had that all lined up and ready to go, I just glued mine together. You can use wood glue. You can use whatever strong glue you feel like using, but you just want to get those together nice and good. And then you can clamp them too to hold them in place. Oh yes, and I also painted the frame black because it went well with it, but you could just stain it. You can do it so many different ways. You can also use wood filler to fill in where the pieces do connect that if you do want. But this is how mine came out and I love the colors in this and the way that that did look. Now for this one, this one is kind of a mercury glass look, but I'm not using metallic or mirrored spray paint to do mine. I'm gonna be using these two pieces, again with my um, Gorilla Hot Glue. I'm gonna be putting these two glass pieces from Dollar Tree together. And I love the shape that these have. You can turn this into a candle, um, just fill it with wax and you would have a pretty candle. And again, this is another reversible piece, but um, I'm gonna be doing like the mercury glass look on it. So you just fill 
water and vinegar i do mine just half and half um there is a different mixture but i just use half and half half what white white vinegar and water and then you spray and then you spray on the paint um immediately but mine broke when i was bringing it in after it started to dry so i did a second one and this is how it came out but yeah this is a simple and easy way to do a mercury glass and like i said you can fill this with wax and make an actual candle this is one of my older favorites so it is like a plaster sculpture so i'm not i'm mimicking that one there for only a few dollars i'm gonna make it so i'm using plaster of paris so you'll mix it um per the instructions that are on the plaster of paris so it's like whatever parts water whatever parts um the mixture it's real easy to use once you um figure out the mixture and how the consistency should look but um and you can do this for so many different things because a lot of art pieces are like they have that abstract look to it and this is just a real simple way to do that and you can also use this to cover other things and it kind of works good with that like paper mache type look so i mixed mine to it mine was like kind of a watery kind of consistency so um I mixed a little more in but it's still kind of that that watery consistency because like i said it's kind of like a a paper mache that i'm doing here so you can do this with just some water and mod podge too but i wanted it to have like a bit of texture so what i'm using to help get that circle shape is just a bowl i covered it with plastic so that it would be easy to remove the sculpture piece once i was done and then i'm just dipping i made fat, um, strips of paper so just the newspaper circulars you get in the mail i just took and cut those into like two inch strips and i'm using those to wrap around it's not even or anything like that it's because the piece itself was just like a rough looking piece but you just wipe it off and then um i'm layering just a little more and then you just set it aside to dry once you get it to the thickness and the shape that you want it to have you set it aside let it to dry per the instructions and you can see all the extra pieces on the plastic they just you know kind of chip away you cut the piece and then take out your sculpture so this is just a real easy way to make a sculpture piece it does take a little bit of work but you are saving a ton a ton a ton of money um especially if you like pieces like this all right so this is a standing sculpture so you want to make sure too that it can stand up so when i did the second piece i made sure everything was laying out in a standing position again i used the bowl and wrapped the pieces inside so when i did the paper pieces i wrapped them inside and around the bowl and then let that dry you can sand it once you're done to smooth out because you'll see like little chunks and stuff in there but if you want to keep it that natural sculpture looking like um then you can just leave those and then i painted mine with this ultra matte spray paint which is real easy to do because it has like a nice coat to it and then this is how it came out another one to save you a ton of money if you like um those textured pieces and you don't want to spend that much money on those and you can make them your own custom size too which is great this one one of my favorites it is a cement bowl so i'm making a mold for the inside because i have this um like a drip pan from dollar tree that i'm gonna be using for the outside but i couldn't find a bowl for the inside so i made that little mold there and then i'm just taking i'm mixing the quick cement in the bowl itself once it dries a little i'm just going to take and push in um the mold there but not all the way to the bottom because it's a bowl you want it to have a bottom then i let that dry a little more so that everything could take shape it took that piece out and then let it completely dry mine did crack a little on the bottom but that was all right because it was still together i had tried the marbling effect it didn't come out the way that i wanted it to come out but it was still a really pretty cement bowl um i even love the little air pockets in there i was trying to figure out a way to recreate them the air pockets on a bigger scale because i wanted do another piece but i need more of those air pockets um but this is how it came out and that is to this day still one of my favorite diys 
these right here okay so now they have all these items at dollar tree but i have this three ring um set i have wood dowels but i didn't get this all from dollar tree now and this is another boho inspired piece i'm going to take two of the dowels and i'm going to paint them with a metallic style paint just so they can match kind of the ring i picked a ring the size that i wanted if you wanted to do a bigger one you can get um bigger sticks to do yours and then i'm just going to take some yarn you can use macrame cord um i'm going to take and i'm going to just tie the pieces on so i'm just going crisscross on both sides with the yarn just to secure i did a lot to make sure it was nice and secure and then tied it off in a knot cut off the extra i did that to both sides i did one piece at a time um, I worked on one piece at a time. You can do this in different ways. You can make like a whole wall set, being that you have three rings. You can make a big one, a medium sized one, a small one, and you can make them different ways because this is an inspiration piece from artwork that I did see online. But I'm just taking and putting two pieces of the yarn together. So the white and the brown, and I'm just cutting them down to the size that I want them to be, and then just looping them over and tying it. And this is how it looks. I did both sides on it, but you can just do one side if you want like i said you can do a mixture and have you a whole wall display there is an easier way to do this than taking it out individually but i took mine out individually but if you want you can just get a pet brush one of those thin metal pet brushes from dollar tree and comb out the yarn but um i took mine out individually it has a cute little crinkle to it i evened out all of the in pieces to give it kind of that feathered look and then you can just hang it on the wall you don't need an extra hook or anything like that you just hang it by the metal and these are the inspiration pieces and you can see they're over a hundred dollars i did mine for just a few dollars and again you can get all these items at the dollar tree now now for this one right here another simple one so i have this two pack of canvases that you can get from five and below and they are five dollars for two so that's 250 each i have these placemats i got from walmart um i have a ton of these they came in gold metallic and then um now they have so many other pretty ones too that you can use but I'm gonna be doing kind of a reverse canvas. So you take the canvas off and then you have that pretty frame there and then you just remove the staples. You can just do it just like that. And those colors are really pretty together, but I love black um, art. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to paint the canvases black. You can also spray paint them too if you want it to be just, you know, a bit quicker. I'm also painting the canvas, like the frame black too. I'm leaving the canvas as is. And then I'm just going to hot glue the placemats down to the canvas, overlapping them. And then I'm just stapling that canvas back onto the frame. You make sure you pull it nice and tight so that it's not loose. And then what you'll do once you're done is you'll cut off all of the excess that is on the back there so that you don't see it from the front. And then you're done. You can also place something to hang it because once you reverse it, now it's, um, doesn't have the piece on the back to hang it with but that is how that came out so quick so simple and you can do so many things with placemats because they make so many pretty placemats now this one is a cute piece of artwork okay so i have this canvas and then i have these pretty colors so this pink and then like this mustard color and i'm gonna mix them but i'm not gonna mix them you know if you like i'm not gonna mix them thoroughly because I wanted to like poke out the different colors to poke out. So I just divided the canvas in half and then I started to paint. I feathered it out because I didn't want that, that clean line. I went along all of the edges of the canvas because you know, when it's hanging on the wall, you do see those pieces. And then I'm going along the other side with the pink. And then again, just feathering it out and doing along all of the edges of the canvas the bottom the side the top and that is how that looks and then to just define that piece in the middle i'm just going to take this gold metallic paint which i love and then just put that there just a rough line it doesn't have to be clean if you want yours to be clean you can i printed out this line art if you are good with line art you can really just sketch yours out with a pencil and this step will be easier but i printed mine out and then i'm poking holes in the canvas you don't want to do them too big because the canvas is um it's kind of like a plastic like material but not a plastic material if, if you know what i mean so it can tear 
So you don't want to be too rough with it, but you want to be able to see. You can also just dot it. You can take a pen and poke little pinholes in there so you can be able to see what you want to do with this but whichever way just to mark up the line art and then i'm just making sure i have enough yarn to go ahead and do this so it's really just stitching so you place them basically even evenly i tied off at the end and then i'm just going out i'm just eyeballing the evenness but um where i kind of marked the design at so you're just going to go in and out in and out in and out in and out all the way around the design so like i said sometimes the holes got hard to see but if you um like i said are good at drawing you can just sketch this out with a pencil or you can mark this with a pen so that you can see it better because especially around like the small details you'll have to remember which way those lines are going to make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look so i did all that and then when you're done you'll just tie it off the same way that you tied it off in the beginning in the back but she looks real good and you can do this with different colors too i did mine with black um but you can do this with different colors you can do it with colors that will kind of match the art that you were doing but the black went really nice with this but um, I just tied that off when I was done and then I went along and I did the other side as well. So the same way on the other side I did. And then I cut the paper and then like gently, you know, to take it off. Um, when I was removing this one, I was like, this would be cute if you could, if the paper was like maybe a different color and you mod podge that down and then you would have like another effect there. But um, I ended up removing all the paper and this is how this came out. I love this piece. It is so pretty and you can do this in so many different colors, so many different ways, but it's a way to add just a bit of personalization to your artwork. And there's so many pretty line art drawings out there right now that you can use to make just some really pretty art. Now for this one, this is a way to reuse old items. So I have these boxes, like I have a lot of things because um, I have things. So I keep these out, but I wanted to cover them. So I'm just taking this old laptop box and I'm going to use some textured paint to cover it because I love a textured piece. So it's just a baking soda and um, paint mix. And you can mix it to the texture that you want. You can do a little bit of texture, a lot of texture with this, but I'm just using that and then I'm painting the box so that's really it it's really easy and simple and then for this one I'm gonna reuse an old candy container like the Forever Rochers I'm reusing that I took off the packaging off of it and then I'm painting that the same way you can add little details to this you can add handles you can add so many different things I'm just adding a little button that I have to the top of the remote box the other one um I just left plain and simple but like I said, some handles on that would be cute, some leather handles. But this is how it came out and just a way to reuse something old, but to keep your stuff hidden away too. And the white just makes it nice and clean and simple. So you don't have to throw away everything. You can repurpose it. This was one of my first wood projects and it is a jewelry holder. I love this piece. It was so easy, so simple to make. I got these pieces of wood. I didn't have to do any cutting or anything like that. I just used them the size that they were only thing that I did cut was the wooden dowel and I'm just staining them I glued them together with wood glue this super strong I'm using these hooks these are real easy to put in I didn't have to pre-drill any holes or anything like that this wood was nice and soft I spaced those out basically with my fingers for one of these I took and I put the hooks to hang the wood dowel and you can hang a ton of things on these so one of it has a ledge one of them just has the dowel but they both have a ton of hooks and then you'll put something in the back to hang these to the wall and these are great for jewelry storage and these are also a dupe so i saved myself a bunch of money making those this right here another one of my favorites so it's a candle holder now dollar tree has a lot of nice glass pieces i was using a bra top but you can use one of the glass bowls from dollar tree along with the glass vase from dollar tree and put those together 
just to cover up the seam, I added some of those beads from Dollar Tree, painted everything black, and you have a real tall candle holder, which is just real nice and simple. And you can paint this in different colors. You can glam that out, just like everything. This is a no DIY DIY. So the vases from Dollar Tree are great. You can just fill them with something, different things for different holidays, different seasons. And it's just a great piece of decor. This one I'm reusing. The Dollar Tree vases are one of my favorites. So I'm just reusing one of the Dollar Tree vases that I had did something else with. Um, and I'm just gluing the Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. You can do so many things with these Jenga blocks too. I'm spacing these. I'm making sure that they're straight going up and down. But um, the pattern around doesn't really matter. Um, I glued those down and then just painting it. I wanted to have a little texture look. So I just blotted on the paint so that it didn't have the strokes and stuff in it painted in the inside. And this is how that came out. So quick, so simple. So if you see the Dollar Tree vases, you should grab them because they are great pieces of decor and great pieces to use as DIYs. You can do so many different things with those. This one, I'm using the charger plate just as a template, but what I'm using is this box from the post office that you do get for free. So this is a cardboard home decor DIY. So I'm cutting the cardboard and you can see the charger plate kind of overlaps. So it left a flat piece on the bottom on the top, which worked out great because this has to stand. I'm using like the flaps from the pieces to make the sides here and then the bottom. So I'm leaving the top open. I'm hot gluing it just to hold it in place while I put everything together. I'm using painter's tape. You can use masking tape. Um, it'll take to stuff better, but um, I had Painter's tape. So I'm using painter tape, a ton of it, to make sure everything stays together. You can cover this with cement and it would be a really pretty cement vase. I'm covering mine with caulk from the Dollar Tree. I'm leaving it rough to give it that texture. And then I painted it this gold and this is how it came out. Of course, you won't fill it with any real plants, but you can fill this with like pretty stems, different things like that. And cardboard, it's great because you can create your own shapes, own style. So this is another cardboard piece. You can also use um, the pool noodles from Dollar Tree from different places, but I have a ton of cardboard tubes. So I'm cutting them down to size. I have one long in the middle and then I'm cutting them so that they get smaller as they go out. Um, and then I'm gluing everything together. And then that's, you know, how it looks. It's just a wall art piece that I'm gonna do. So when you have cardboard tubes, as you can see, it has the little lines in it. Um, that you do sometimes still see once you paint. So I'm just giving this a little texture with the cork from the Dollar Tree. And then I painted it black and then I put something to hang it on the back, but you can do this in so many different colors too. This, a really easy and quick lantern using Dollar Tree items. So again, I have some wood planks from the Dollar Tree and the Jenga blocks. So I'm using the one plank as the base here and then I'm putting the Jenga blocks. I'm gluing those down. You can use also wood glue to put these down, but the hot glue works just fine. Like I said, I use Gorilla hot glue and it is has a nice hold to it. So I'm gonna make several more of those squares, but not with the planks in them. So just the base one I used with the plank and then these other ones, I'm just gonna be making kind of the same shape as I made those. I'm gonna just do as many as you want based on how long you want your, how tall you want your lantern to be. I'm gonna be using the Jenga blocks also in the corners just to help to stabilize and place these pieces together. And then I'm gonna glue each level to the top of the Jenga block, if that makes sense, and then glue the Jenga blocks together. You could use just one long piece of wood there. Um, you can find something like that at the hardware store, but the Jenga blocks work just fine. Once I got all the levels I wanted, you can use some wood filler and go in the cracks. You can stain this, you can do so many different things, but I painted mine black because I love a black piece of um, decor. And then I'm taking some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm just burning it to get rid of all those little extra frays and fuzzies that it does have. And just making a handle with the nautical rope. I'm gluing it down. You can also staple it to make sure it stays in place. But like I said, this Gorilla Hot Glue works just fine. And then you can put a little folk handle in there and you have your own lantern and again you can make those in different sizes you can make it taller if you want you can make it wider if you want 
um this is a piece of wall art again using dollar tree items i love using dollar tree items i cut the little balls that they do have the little sport balls i cut them in half and then i'm just taking the wood skewers they come in a pack and then i'm just filling that in you could cut this lower but um i left mine kind of tall I painted it black and then did the tips with the gold spray paint. I don't know if it's picking it up the way that it um, should, but those are like gold tips there. And then you can do this in a glam look too if you want, but um, I like a black and gold piece. This is another Dollar Tree one. Um, so we should call this 55 plus Dollar Tree DIYs. But um, these are napkin rings and then these party cups from the Dollar Tree so i'm just taking these cups come apart like that and then i'm just taking the drinking part of the cup and then stacking the candle holders and then putting back on the base there so that it can stand up you can do this as tall as you want and then you will have a cute little candle holder and again this is something that you can do in different ways you can bling this out you can change the color so many different ways another dollar tree one so you can take a vase from the dollar tree and do this but i have a lot of cardboard tubes so i'm going to be using the cardboard tube and those peel and stick tiles from the dollar tree it's only it only adheres around the edges so i just take that back and go off and then i glued it down and you can cut your tube down the size painted mine black and then just doing a little brushing on top so that the details on the tile pop out because this tile is so pretty and when you do this in different colors you can do this like a farmhouse look you can do this so many different ways but this is how i did mine and again i filled it with faux florals but if you were using the actual vase you can fill it with real florals if you want it to but um i like to repurpose things now for this this is another inspirational piece you can use cotton clothesline rope you can use thick macrame cord you can do this different way you can use nautical rope if you want but i'm just taking some okay and you're going to measure out how long you want it to be this is a knotted piece so double how long you want it to be plus you have to figure out what length it's going to be once you knot it so once you figure that out you can cut your pieces i'm doing three pieces together i'm wrapping around some yarn so the yarn is just securing it together and just giving it a different look and then i'm going to take out again you don't have to do this this long way that i do you can use the the pet brush to do this but um i like to do things the long way tie that off to secure that to the yarn and then i finished wrapping around all of the yarn there and then tied it into a knot and you want to leave this like kind of hanging up for a while just so you can work all the kinks out and everything straightens up but once you're done you have a nice little piece of wall heart and again this was like an inspirational piece that i saw that was like so much money but i did mine for just a few dollars this is another one reusing those cardboard tubes i love to reuse things so this is going to be like a plant stand side table type piece you can do this in different ways i'm just using that piece in the middle just to give it shape because this is really strong these cardboard tubes are really strong and you don't really need anything else to help um stabilize it I'm going to take, because I want to keep that cute shape that it made when it did this. So I'm just going to take and make a top and a bottom using cardboard. Cut it down the size so that it had like that, you know, that tulip kind of look to it. Again, to take away those lines in the cardboard tube, I'm adding texture with this cork right here. And then I was going to do like an ombre kind of look. It did not turn out the way I wanted it to. So I ended up painting it black and like i said these cardboard tubes are real nice and strong so it held up this plant just fine and this this container is heavy but you can also use this as a side table too this one another quick one using those candle holders from the dollar tree so before they found i found the honeycomb like ones i just had some of these so when i saw the honeycomb ones i went back and forth more but um this really pretty you can just put these together again you can do these two-tone you can stack these high you can do these in so many different ways but um you'll just hot glue them together and then you'll have just a really pretty candle holder and like i said you can do these as tall or as short as you want them this one another one using my favorite bowls and cups and these are 50 cent so you get these at walmart you get these at target um i'm just gonna glue it together 
and you can add extra depth to this. I can make it thicker looking with some clay, with some different things once you get the shape. But um, I'm just leaving mine as is. To cover up kind of where it connects, you can take some cork from the Dollar Tree and just fill that in so it looks kind of like a continuous one piece. Sand it down or smooth it out um, before it dries if you want. But um, yeah, this is real easy, real simple. And it's like a tall pillar bowl piece because of and the shape of that cup is really nice because it's not just that regular round cup it's kind of like a square you know but you can paint this i'm doing um just a white paint you can add texture to this like i'm gonna do with the stone so being that you're adding the texture with the stone you really don't need to do that piece in the middle but um it does help and it gives it kind of that stone look and it's mimicking kind of this bowl from rh here which is hundreds of dollars and mine cost me just a couple of dollars and again if you want it thicker you can add a level of clay um this is another repurposed piece so this is just a cleaning container that i had and then once i was done i'm just gonna you can cut the top part off there but i'm just gonna like fix those little groove lines filling it in with some cork i'm leaving it rough because you know i like a textured piece using some textured paint and then this is how it comes out and then i'm just going to paint that black you can paint it any color you want and this is how it came out and it's a nice little these are faux flowers of course because i love a faux flower but this is just real nice and simple and the shape because a lot of these containers you have have a really nice shape this is a lampshade from ikea it's had a better life so it is a little beat up i straightened it out a bit um but ikea has a ton of lampshades too if you didn't know but um i straightened it out a bit and again doing kind of a paper mache type look to it so i have my strips and then i just have a glue mixture that i'm putting on there so you can use mod podge to make a glue mixture and then just paint those layering it on did it different ways so one vertical one horizontal and then just once it dries it's nice and hard and so i'm kind of trying to give it that vintage antique look but you can do this in so many different ways so again with the textured paint method the baking soda and then i mixed a few different paint colors together and then i'm globbing it on there because i want it to look like a stone um but you can go smoother with it and then once that dried then i'm coming in there with the brown and then I'm kind of trying to add a distressing. So you can do different colors of brown like I did here, um, just to give it like that aged look, kind of like a restoration hardware, kind of like a, a pottery barn type look. And you can do this in different colors. You can do this in lighter colors. It doesn't have to be the brown. And then I'm just filling in mine with moss because, you know, every restoration hardware piece has some moss in it. But you can fill it with other things if you like. But this gives it like that faux stone look. And it's a way to reuse something that you were going to maybe toss out. Another reusable one. So this is a bottle. And more of those cardboard tubes that i have and then i'm just going to just change the top there again i'm using those cups from the dollar tree so this is just the base of the cup and i'm making a candle holder again to fill in where everything connects you can take some cork you can do different things to just clean up those lines again some textured paint um, and then I'm spray painting it with the stone to give it just another look. And it is a cute little candle holder. You can do this even higher up if you use more of the cardboard tube. You can do this um, the reverse way, but you can do this so many different ways. More Dollar Tree items. So again, the little bases from the other cups from Dollar Tree. And then these little like dessert cups from Dollar Tree. So these are really pretty shaped too. In the party section, Dollar Tree has a ton of things that you can use for parties or for DIYs. So I'm just gluing these together, bottom side to bottom side. And this is something again that you can go higher up with. If you're gonna go really tall with this, you're gonna wanna put something in the base to stabilize it, like some rocks or something like that in between when you're gluing it so that it doesn't tip over. But um, then I painted that with just some black spray paint and I have tall pillar candle holders. This one, I've seen these pieces at Anthropology, different places, 
and it's a lot and it's really just a wine bottle so I had an old wine bottle I'm taking some cork from the Dollar Tree dollar 25 and I'm just gonna I'm rubbing it on with my finger there but I'm just gonna cover the old hole outside you can do this with some clay too so if you have some air dry clay you can do this also using the cork though it's a dollar 25 not bad and then you can smooth it out with your finger and some water before it completely dries most of the pieces that I do see like this they have these little lines in it so just before it dries I'm just putting these rough lines in it and then I'm painting it white and this is how it looks and I'm telling you these pieces which are just wine bottles covered um do go for a lot like on places like anthropology urban outfitters different things like that there's a way to make a wall art display so I have these frames in the Dollar Tree they're three different sizes but you can do these with so many different things you can do this with actual artwork you can do this so many different ways but I'm just going to take, and these are great for holidays too. If you want to do like a little holiday thing, you can put holiday theme paper in here. But I'm just going to take and measure out paper. This is peel and stick paper from Dollar Tree. And then I have these chains and I'm just going to make hooks. I'm going to hang them to the back of the actual hooks of the picture frame. And then you have like a little wall art display that you can make custom for holidays, for a big wall, a small wall. These are real easy to do now on to this one this one was repurposing I, this is my second time repurposing these tables they were side tables that i had um i had turned this one into like a rust kind of brass kind of color and put like a leather top on it but um yeah this is a way to just keep reusing your old furniture until you just got all the use out of it that you can get but i took apart the base of one so you'll have all of these different pieces so based on what you have is based on how yours will look but you can take two side tables and turn them into a bar cart basically because i'm flipping the top of the other one it's not going to hold the mirror piece like it used to so i just put a piece of wood there secured that in and then that held that piece there i'm going to glue these together to clamp them while they dry let that dry overnight and then i painted everything back black because the pieces were mismatched and i have a little bar cart so like i said you can reuse your old furniture to make something new so this went from two side tables to a side table that was leather covered back to two side tables and now into a bar cart so now for this i was trying to replicate these marble pieces and they have spray paint that you can use to get a marble effect um I've done marble painting before. This didn't work out the way that I wanted it to work out. This was an old toy from my ferret that um, it's a weird tube because it wasn't long enough for her to have fun in. But um, so I had this big cardboard tube. I made a base for it and then I painted it white and then I was going to do the marble look, which is just you just paint the veins, you feather them out. It's real. It's real easy once you get the hang of doing the marble look. You have to feather them before they dry though so you can't go across the whole piece and do it doing different colors help um but it wasn't giving me the look that i wanted so i switched it up to this piece from restoration hardware which is kind of a like a textured kind of look so i took that same piece and i'm just going to cover it with some um plaster of paris mix and you can use cork you can use different things i'm taking a paper towel because i don't know if you know this the texture in the piece from restoration hardware but it kind of had that that same texture so i'm dabbing it while it's wet with the paper towel and it's giving it that texture you could paint yours black like the restoration hardware was but i was trying to be different because i always paint everything black so um i wanted that texture and then to age it kind of like a cross between restoration hardware and pottery barn so i painted it brown and then went in with white and then did a darker brown to give it kind of that aged look and again filled it with moss because 
well the high-end pieces have moss so <laughs> that is how that came out it does still hold the texture and it's a way to make that the distress look but this is cardboard this one another dollar tree one so i have these little party cups from dollar tree and um i have candle tops like the metal candle top but dollar tree does sell a little container that has a metal top like that but um I know that's candle safe because it came from a candle taking the dollar tree beads taking them in silver and just wrapping them around those clear pieces there and then putting the candle top on um you could use a different piece but we know that that is candle safe so if you wanted to use it for a candle and it was silver so it went with the silver beads but um I did two together and one singular so now i have two different size candle pillars and it's just a real quick and easy candle pillar but like i said if you wanted to do this different ways you can do this different ways you can use different colors but this is real easy and it kind of has that glam look to it this one is okay so i've seen like wall tiles in different high-end stores and dollar tree has a lot of these pretty wall towel pieces and you can do so many different um things with this so i thought about at first using it all together then i changed my mind and then i wanted a border on it um you could do this different ways but then i cut off the border and i just wanted these elevated tiles you can put this on a canvas and have this look but i'm just gonna put them to the wall you just put something on the back to hang them and you can do this different ways you can do a diamond pattern like this you can do it in a regular square shape you can get more and go across a whole wall you can do this in so many different ways um but it's just an inspiration piece. And you see these have like a metal look to them. So if you look around, I'm telling you, a lot of these high-end stores and different places have those type pieces for so much. Again, a back with the Dollar Tree pieces. So these are these little clear cups from Dollar Tree and they have a little cute shape to them. Again, I said Dollar Tree has those metal containers that have these metal tops to them. So it's like a little metal tin where you can keep stuff in. Um, glue those together and then just putting the little metal top on there. Again, making a cute candle holder because I love a good candle holder. To cover up the seam, I'm just taking these little stickers from Dollar Tree. So it's like little bead stickers. So they have adhesive on the back and you see that covers that up so pretty you can leave it the um, gold but I just painted everything the same color and then you have little candle holders so this is another quick easy and simple one using Dollar Tree items all right if you like colored glass like I like colored glass you can make your own colored glass so if you have pieces that you have at home that you like but you wish they had some color to it you can make your own color glass so you just take some food coloring you can mix the colors together to create the colors that you want so you'll just look and see what colors you need to mix together to make whatever color you want you could take some Mod Podge and mix it together get your color and then mix it around the inside of whatever glass leave it upside down you can leave it on a wire rack so it doesn't pull at the top and let it dry you can also put it in the oven to dry but I just leave mine overnight and it still has that same pretty effect. This one, okay, this was an inspirational piece again. So I just have the Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint one set white, one set black and make basically just a little checkered tray. So I'm doing, you can do it like, oh, what am I thinking? You can do this just the color on top of the color or you can stagger it like I did mine. Um, but you can do this in so many different ways. When you stagger it like I did mine, you're going to have these pieces on the edge that you'll have to cut off. The best way I found it to do it is to tape it and then cut it because you won't have those splintering pieces so much, which I had to go back in and touch up. But um, then I'm just taking for the lip of the tray, just more of the Jenga blocks going around in that same checkered pattern. And I have a cute little table tray. You can do this in a bigger scale, a smaller scale, but that's a real easy, simple one. I'm back with my 50 cent bowls um, and then some items from Dollar Tree. So it's just another little pedestal bowl.
but this time we're gonna cover it with twine so you'll glue them together and instead of spray painting or painting it you're just gonna cover it with twine so I get the twine too from the Dollar Tree and I'm just wrapping it around gluing it every now and then and then instead of doing the inside of the bowl twine I'm gonna paint mine black and then just continue around you can paint the base black you can do so many different ways but I did the whole outside with the twine and then the inside has the black you can cut away all the little flyaways and burn them too if you want you don't have to but you can it just takes away some of those little flyaways there and then you'll have a cute twine bowl i love this piece it looks so cute on my shelf and it is just nice and simple and again using dollar tree items so it did not cost me a lot at all now for this one okay another dollar tree item so sometimes they'll have these cups and they have like a little wavy look to it but they do have straws on it but that was okay because i just cut the straw off you can cut it off with scissors and then again now dollar tree has these nice pretty glass saucers which will be a little more sturdier but i use these little plastic saucers and i painted these with a like off-white color and then came back in with my stone spray paint and another cute candle holder and I love the little wavy detail in that from the cups this love holiday time because they have the little candy um holders I do like to keep out candy and stuff a lot but um I don't necessarily want it to be that like that so I just paint these black and then you have a cute little candy holder and it's really I just paint the outside not the inside so you don't have to worry about the paint or anything in the inside with your candy but then you can keep it out all year this one uh wall art using the clothesline rope so this is cotton clothesline rope this is real simple you just have to be careful with the hot glue but you'll just start to make your little circle here um you can stitch it if you're good with that like but it's like a heavy duty stitching so i just hot glued mine and then you'll just go around when you're done and you have it the size that you want you just tuck the last little piece there in the back and then to give it its shape to curve out i just played around with it so it curved out now I'm just going to paint little details on it. You can do some embroidery stitching with this and give it just another element. But um, I just painted mine, made sure I filled in all the cracks, tried to make my lines as straight as possible. And then to hang it, my favorite way to hang it, this worked just fine on this too, was the braided twine. And then I decided where I wanted that to be and then just put some hot glue and then a ton of hot glue on the top. I'm telling you this Gorilla Hot Glue, it works. It keeps everything in place. And this is how that came out. And this was so easy, so simple. And again, you can do these in different sizes and make a whole wall display. This one, so simple. Okay, Dollar Tree, I haven't seen it in a while, but they used to have little leather pieces. But if you can't find leather pieces at Dollar Tree, they do sell them in other places. But I'm just going to take a little leather square. I'm folding it like that. And then I'm measuring out, okay, because these are going to be my corners. So you'll measure out how big you want those. So you want to make sure it's even on both sides. So I did about two inches on both sides, but you want to make sure it's even on both sides because they have to line up. And when I fold it like like that that makes it easy to cut all the pieces at the same time then now you want to make sure that everything lines up and you can glue it you can glue it with fabric glue with hot glue you can stitch it but you want to make sure you're gluing and putting together the right pieces if that makes sense so that all the corners look like corners and then you can take and if you wanted to top stitch that so then you have this and i'm telling you i've seen these leather catch-all trays for so much and i did this little faux leather one for so cheap this one another one of my favorites so this is a little box from dollar tree they have these little cardboard boxes i'm taking and putting a hole in it you don't need a drill you can just do this with you can just stab it with a screwdriver but uh or the scissors i'm taking and i put a hole in the top and then i'm putting a few um, pieces of the twine in there tying that off in a knot and then i'm going to braid it as long as i want it and then you know doubled folded over and then push that other piece to again you don't need the drill to do that i'm going to take some fat like the feather finish cement and i'm just going to cover all of these pieces you don't really have to do the inside but i did mix my cement in that 
um, just because it was easier to do it that way. And then just covered all the pieces. You can smooth it out before it dries or you can leave it rough like that. And then once it dries, you'll have you a little cement container. And you can do this with different size pieces. But this is such an easy way to make a cement piece. This is another inspirational piece. So you'll see a lot of pretty artwork with the texture and stuff. So I got this big canvas from Michaels, I believe. And then um, I have this spackle here. So this is real easy, real simple. So just to give it that little texture, I love this spackle because you can tell when it's dry because the color changes. So I'm just putting the spackle in random places. And like I said, this is a great way to add texture to your piece. And it's real easy. Once it dries, you see it goes to almost white, kind of an off-white. And then you have that textured look. Um, a lot of textured um, pieces of artwork are just in white. So you don't really even have to do too much. But um, I painted my white so everything would be all the same color. And now I'm just going to add this gold, these gold lines for like a little detail. I'm feathering them out. Like you could do this so many different ways. That's why I love creating my own artwork. And this one goes along with the other um, line art piece that I did do. I did end up after because i changed my decor so i did this in that pretty pink with the mustard again not mixing it all the way so that both colors could pop through so i did this in that pretty pink but then i changed my dec my decor later on to more of a black and white look so this was like uh, kind of out of place but i did love the way that it looked so what i did was i went and painted the pinkish pieces i painted them black and um i still have this up to this day i did little touch-ups where the paint came over and this is how it looks you can frame this to give this another look but this is such a good statement piece and it's so big and it didn't cost me that much at all to make this and i love it so I always say get out and make your own artwork because it fits in with your space, it fits in with your personal style, and you can customize the pieces to what you want in so many places. So blank canvases in so many different sizes. Michaels, you can even get canvases at Five Below. You can get canvases at Dollar Tree. You can get them so many different places. But the texture on this, and like I said, you can do this in so many different colors, so many different ways. So get out and try to make your own artwork because you will it's really easy and you will love doing it now for this one another dupe like piece so it's just a glass piece from dollar tree i'm gonna paint it white and then you can do these with so many different shape glasses different things but i'm just gonna paint it white inside outside you can also spray paint this that might be easier for you but um the paint kind of gives it like a textured look but you can do a textured um detail with the spray paint also but once that dries i'm just gonna come in and freestyle just kind of that same shape that the other pieces have you don't have to be clean with this because it just the other piece look just like a little hand drawing too um so this is just real easy but only thing i would say you might want to use a matte paint because i think that gives it a better look for what you're doing but this is real easy real simple and this only cost a couple of dollars and again you can do this in so many different shapes so many different ways but when you see a piece sometimes just think if you can go ahead and make your own piece your own way this one another wall decor inspired by another piece i said we can do that for cheaper so i have a bunch of different yarn and this is like a boho style piece too a bunch of different yarn i'm just going to measure out how long i want the pieces to hang and then cut a ton of those same size pieces so you're going to just keep going around enough to fill up whatever piece you're doing if you're doing your short like mine then you'll make enough to fill up those pieces if you're doing it long then you'll just keep going and i did them um just like i said to fill up so once i have a i did it in sections once i had a certain amount on a section then i just tied that off and then went on and created another one and you can do these in different lengths or they can all be the same length um this is just a piece that you can create and customize to fit your own you know personal style 
so once you have all of your sections all of your pieces together and i love this yarn too if you can find a color like this this is real pretty because it has like different speckles of different colors in it and then you can play off of those colors so you can find pieces that match those colors but this is just a real pretty yarn so once i was done with that part and i had all the sections that i wanted and just know it's not going to be as floofy as it is when you make the sections because when you take and you go over with the yarn you're kind of like pressing everything together so it has a different look it's not as full as it is when you're doing it that way so i'm just wrapping the yarn around you want to make sure it's nice and close not too too tight because you don't want it to you know when you do something too tight it gets kind of wavy like so just tight enough so that it is stable it's stiff but not wavy if that makes sense once you get it to the length that you want you can just take one of those other pieces of yarn tie it together and then cut it off and then you can go down to another section or you can leave it just like that you can do it in so many different ways but um each one i'm doing different you know because if you saw the inspiration pieces it's like kind of, it's hard to explain how to explain them i can't think of the words that i'm trying to say right now but you you know when you saw the piece you saw me so i just went over and just using different colors and yarn different things and you can see some of them were kind of wavy because i did it kind of tight but i just bended them back into shape and then like i said it's not as floofy as it was when i did it so um i was able to put it on one of these wood skewers and then you could put something on the end too so that it doesn't fall off but this is how it looks and again i love the little speckles in the yarn that i did use and it picks up on the other colors and it kind of gives that boho vibe really nice okay so you can get mirrors from michael's and they come in different sizes and they come just like that and then you can get these hula skirts from dollar tree which they have a ton of now in adult sizes kid sizes and this is another boho type piece so i'm just going to take and glue the hula skirt on to the mirror and you can do several rows just kind of overlapping them um when you run out of one just start another one this is real easy real simple to do and then when you're done you can create a little trim in the inside to give it another detail but the way that the hula skirt is with the outside it kind of gives it its own little trim if, if you know what i mean because the way the pieces do come together but you can do this in different ways um so if you wanted to add an extra detail you can do that and then you can just cut the hula skirt down to the size that you want you're gonna have to think about how it's gonna look when it is laying on the wall because it won't be laying flat if that makes sense so once you do all that and then you'll attach something to the back to be able to hang the piece up also and again using my favorite method just twine and a ton of hot glue and again i tell you that works that works out really 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 well when i did put this on the wall the the hula part was too long so it was kind of floppy-ish looking to me so i did end up going back and cutting it down just a little bit lower so that it you know fanned out better and didn't have that that droopy look to it but this is something that you can customize and because michael sells these mirror pieces in different sizes you can make a whole set of these and it's real easy and real simple to do. You can also, if you wanted to do like a nautical look, you can do these in just nautical rope and just layer that going out. Um, they have the white nautical rope. They have the, you know, the traditional brown ones. There's so many different ways you can do that. And it makes a really like nice piece. This more back with the hula bras. Again, um, now Dollar Tree has those glass bowls that you can use but these are just the candlesticks and now Dollar Tree has a ton of different cute candlesticks too that you can use in different shapes but I just glued those pieces together and tried to adjust it the best I could before it dried and then I painted it white and then I went in with my favorite stone spray paint 
and I gave it a hit of that and then you'll have like a little stone piece um you can use this as a candle holder I use this I hold um little things in here so you can use it like a pillar trinket tray if you want but it's just a really nice simple piece using items from the Dollar Tree and I love the texture that that stone spray paint gives and they do sell that in different um colors too so now for this, this is like an Ikea one. So Ikea sell these little trash bins. They're like $2. And then I have this marble plate from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to make like a little side table. So you can paint, you can leave it if you want. But um, I painted the rim of the top part of the table a gold, a metallic gold. And then I'm going to stack these on top of each other and then just hot glue them together. Um, real easy, real simple. And this too, just so you know, if you didn't want to do it the way that I did it and you want to use it for storage, you can also use it as a storage side table too. But I glued it together and then I'm just going to take and cover it with the cotton clothesline rope. Again, you can use macrame cord, um, different things, but um, I love the cotton clothesline rope. It's inexpensive and it just has a nice look. You can use nautical rope. You can use so many different things, but um, I had got this at like a discount store in my neighborhood and it's just real easy. But when you're looking for clothesline rope, if you're going to be using it, make sure it says cotton because most of the clothesline rope is going to be like a polyester. So it's like a, a plastic. So it's a whole different look. Than, than this is so just make sure especially if you're ordering it online or anything like that make sure that it says cotton so i'm just going to go around um and just instead of cutting it off when i get to the end just keep stacking it up you see it kind of makes like a little wavy part but that's okay so one pack covers one whole trash can for what i had there and then when you get to the end of one just butt up the new one with it it's real easy real simple so you just butt that up together and just start going around the same way and i used hot glue you don't have to use hot glue on every section but you want to put a decent amount so that it stays and then now i have this marble plate a little plastic plate from dollar tree it fits perfectly in the inside i'm putting a little bit of glue in there so that it stays but it kind of like the way it goes in it kind of pops in and stays in place so like i said if you want to do a storage table you cannot glue it and then just you would take it in and out and you can put little things in there and then you would have a storage side table too but i didn't think to use mine for storage when i did do that but this is real easy real simple and it only costs a couple of bucks because the trash cans only cost a couple of dollars the clothesline rope only costs a couple of dollars and of course the plate from dollar tree is a dollar 25 and you can use other charger plates from dollar tree too they have so many different ones to pick from so this is a real simple and it kind of gives me again that boho vibe so if you're looking for that boho vibe this might be the diy that you want to try this one one of my favorites so it's a way to make like that aged glass look or aged container look so i'm taking these two vases from the dollar tree cleaning them off and then i'm going to do that water vinegar mix so again i just use half water half vinegar in mine but if you were trying to do the mercury glass, you would spray paint, you would paint on the um, the water mix first. But because I'm doing like an aged look, what I'm going to do, I'm taking two color spray paints. I'm going to spray paint one color first. I'm going with the black first. So I'm spray painting the whole outside of the vase. And then before that dries, I'm going to come in with the water vinegar mix and then what it kind of does is creates these little bubbles if you put it on before it would create voids so it would be like a mercury glass but because i've covered the whole thing it creates little bubbles so let that dry and then i came in with the gold spray paint and then when you come up the gold spray paint you'll be able to see those little bubbles just a little better and then again i came in with that water vinegar mix and then this time it kind of took away some of that gold so it's not as goldish if that makes sense as it was and it kind of has that aged look i did one a little more one a little less so you can see the difference i like the one where i went kind of heavy on it because it really looks like a little aged piece it looks distressed so you can use that mer you can use different methods to do different things in different ways and get different results 
if that makes sense. So if you wanted to age something, you can use the mercury glass look, but you're still doing the same thing, but just in a different way. You can also just, you know, apply, I've seen a lot of people do dirt and different things, but um, this to me is just an easy, simple way to get that aged look on glass pieces. And I love how those look and again you can do it heavy or you can do it light based on what you want this one is another inspirational piece so frames from dollar, dollar tree really has some good options in frames so if you're looking you might want to check out dollar tree also i love home goods marshalls all of them too so i'm just trying to create like a marbled look on this but i love the look of the gold on this too so i taped off um the section that I did want, I went in with some white paint, painted all around, let that dry, and then I went into the other section with um, black paint. So I kind of did like a gray. I didn't clean the brush, so it was like a um, a muddy look because we're creating like a marble look here. And then I'm just gonna do some veining. When you do the veining, to do the marble effect, you have to be quick. So um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go over the whole thing beforehand because it kind of dries and you can't do the feathering. So you want to do it in little small sections and then you see the feathering works better in little small sections. So if you're going to be doing the marble look, do it in small sections. But um, I went back and cleaned it up as best as I could to, you know, give it that marble look. And then the pieces that I had taped off are those little gold pieces that pop out. So again, I just used a different type piece as an inspirational piece to create my own style piece and using Dollar Tree items and just some paint. And um, you can create a marble look on so many pieces, but like I said, you just want to work in sections and you will go over it and over it till you get the look that you want. So this is how mine came out. I added a little few touches of gold in it, but it is a really cute inspirational picture frame, again, using Dollar Tree items.